Heat and Nets. Miami with the two games to none lead. Spurs and the Blazers. San Antonio with the two games to none lead. Bill, Doug, Jalen, and Sage. Doug, I'll, I'll start with yeah. you. Of these two teams that are down looking up, Nets and Blazers, which of them, in your opinion, has a better chance of coming back to win? I, I don't see either team that's behind 2 a winning the series. Now, I, think, I agree. I think Portland agree. coming home has, has a chance to make it more competitive. Okay. Um, LaMarcus Aldridge has got to play much better. I think Splitter's done a great job on him. But the problem you got with Portland is they're falling behind in all these games. They don't have any bench. And so now the Spurs bench are coming in. And look at the second quarters. So Portland starters have to do a better job of helping their bench because San Antonio's got the much better and more potent bench. I'm glad you brought this up because I think five guys was enough to beat Houston, right? Yeah. You need eight to beat San Antonio. Mm -hmm. You're not beating San Antonio with five guys. And what's happening, as Coach said, they're relying on these guys, Will Barton, Thomas Robinson, you know, C.J. McCollum's not even playing. That was their lottery pick last year. But they just don't have the horses. They got to get those bench guys going. I actually think Brooklyn, um, I don't think either team is going to come back and win. But Brooklyn, at least if they go to that super small lineup with, with Toledovic, um, Allen Anderson, like I would just get rid of the bigs altogether and just turn it into a three-point shooting contest. They might be able to steal a game doing that. I think both of these teams are screwed. I think Nets and Blazers both win game three. I think Do you think the both, Nets win? Yes, I think they both lose the series in five. The problem for the teams down 0-2 is they're going against teams with championship pedigree. Mm -hmm. That happened to be in the NBA Finals last year. Mm -hmm. And our older teams that understand we must take care of business so we can get our rest. Miami's going to show up. The Spurs are going to show up. They're going to try to end these series early. You know, the thing about uh, Brooklyn, when we look at their team, I mean, Paul Pierce, uh, Joe Johnson, and Darren Williams, those three guys have got to play well. I mean, Darren Williams, 0 for 9. Zero yeah. points. I mean, no, Bagel, no, donut. No, no points. Or whatever. Joe Johnson and Paul Pierce, you know, 11, 12, 13 points. Those three guys, then you can have the Toledovich and those other guys come in and do what they're supposed to do. But those three guys are their key. Wait, hold that thought for a second. What do we think happens with Darren Williams in game three? Because to me, this is the most compelling subplot of either game. Oh, for nine. He got roasted the last 24 hours on the internet, sports radio. Even his teammates kind of floated some stuff out. And this is a guy who makes $20 million a year, who was once in the conversation with Chris Paul. And I want to see how he responds, because if you can't respond to this, then I think there's serious, serious First issues career here. scoreless playoff game at, at crunch time. You know, th to me, there's certain things that aren't about X's and O's. It comes down to just getting out and competing on every possession. <sighs> I know from my standpoint, if I was struggling, I was going to run the floor. I was going to get to the basket. I was going to get to the free throw line. Didn't shoot any free throws. You got to be an aggressor. You got to make plays, all right? But you can't, you know, just be picking and choosing your spots. They're counting this guy. He can't be outplayed by Mario yeah. Chalmers. They have no chance. And Norris Cullen, teams that are up 2-0 in playoff series going to win 78% of the time. So overall, the Nets and the Blazers most likely are in trouble. You know, speaking of Williams, I heard George Carl on the radio. They asked him what changed with Dwayne Hibbert from game one to game two, and he was like, um, he, he tried harder? They got rid of Andrew like, Bynum? That's, that's the Darren Williams thing. It's like, um, it's time to step up, But that up, must son. be the most maddening thing as a coach. And Jason Kidd, rookie head coach, a good second half of the season. Uh, good luck with that one. By the way, ABC, 8 o'clock Eastern time, the Heat. And then, we'll then we there. go over to ESPN for the Spurs and the Blazers at 1030. We're going to be there yeah. for it all. Yes, indeed. Hope you are, too.